Hi guys, it's GKCS. I'm talking about the third problem from Codeship this time, which is total diamonds. And as you can expect, you need to calculate the total number of diamonds in this problem. So you have an n cross n grid given to you. All right, and each cell in this grid contains diamonds. Now the diamonds aren't pre-given to you. What you need to do is you need to calculate the number of diamonds in each cell. So let's pick up a cell. Let's say cell i comma j, and the number of diamonds in this is defined by the sum of the row number and the column number, so that is i plus j. These rows are one index, so this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, if you if you pick up this cell, let's say, let's see how three. So let's pick up this cell. So three comma two, so that will be five, right? But these are not the number of diamonds in it. What you need to do is you need to take the digits in this number, which are odd, and the digits in this number, which are even. Sum them both up, and then subtract them. So take the absolute difference. Actually, so uh, in this case, let's say c of i plus j is two, three, seven. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, separate the odd and the even integers to two and three plus seven. So I separated them, took the sum. Now this is ten, and this is two. All I need to do is take the absolute difference between them, so that would be two minus ten or ten minus two, whatever modulo, which gives me eight. Okay, so this cell two three seven contains eight diamonds, and essentially this is the way that you're going to be finding out the number of diamonds in any given cell. Your job is to find the total number of diamonds in the entire grid, which is of size n cross n. Now the the queries are put forward in such a way that they are. 10 raised to the power five test cases. These these you can consider them to be queries, and n can be as large as 10 raised to the power six. So some of the observations are actually quite obvious once you write down the grid uh, for let's say six cross six. Have a look at the first element. That's all. This two because that is i plus j one plus one. The second element over here is going to be three because one plus two. But you see that three occurs here also. For four, you see that four occurs here, here, and here along the diagonal. All right, and also the number of times that four is occurring is three, which is the third diagonal. Uh, three occurred twice, second diagonal. Five occurs four times, fourth diagonal. Six occurs five times, fifth diagonal, and six occur uh, seven occurs six times, which is the last diagonal, six. Eight, on the other hand, just occurs as many times as six occurs. Uh, that is five times. Nine occurs as many times as five occurs, which is four times, and so on and so forth. So just by going through this pattern, what you can do is instead of going through every element in the grid, you can note the number of times one value occurs, and multiply it by that by the uh, by the contribution of that cell, right? Because that's the number of times it's occurring. So mathematically, what what's going to happen is um, two occurs once. So contribution of two, which is I'm just going to call it v. Or I can call it f actually. Yeah, f of two into number of times it's occurring, which is one, plus f of three into number of times it's occurring, which is two. Or is it? No, we can't say for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to f of n plus one. All right, uh, and this occurs n times. So I'll just sum this. And that's the first sum I have, and then I'll say sum plus equal to means I'm adding more stuff here. F of n plus one was seven. After this, you need to go up to f of two n. So f of n plus two into how many times does that occur? It occurs n minus one times. Plus dot 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 up to f of two n. How many times does that occur? It occurs just once. So the number of terms you have in the above equation is n because it's going from one to n, and the number of equations you have, uh, the number of terms you have in the below equation is n minus one. So you have two n minus one terms in total, and each of these terms can be computed in order one. It's it's a brute force thing. Whenever you get a number f of whatever x, literally uh, just take the digits. To the left and to the right, depending on whether they're odd or even, sum them both up, and then take the absolute difference. This is this is there's no smart algorithm here. It's going to be 
uh, logarithmic in terms of x, so order log x, which is negligible in our case. All right. So 2n minus 1 terms exist. You can use this, uh, this algorithm, which is going to be, let's say, log n. And so the total time complexity over here is order n log n. Right? In order n log n, for every test case, you can find a solution. The problem here is that you have n log n as your time complexity and n itself is 10 raised to the power 6. So it's going to be around 10 raised to the power 8 computations in total. It's going to take 1 second per test case and you have 1 lakh test cases. So there's no contest with 1 lakh uh, as your time limit in terms of seconds. So we need a better solution and uh, let's get to that. So what we're going to try to do is build a larger grid using the grid that we already have of size 6. And you see that size 7 has already been created but we're going to try to find the answer to this. So uh, assume for now that the number of diamonds in a size 6 grid is known to you. So that will be D of 6, number of diamonds in a size 6 grid, 6 for 6. Now D of 7 is what you want to find. You see that the number of diamonds in the, uh, in the 6 for 6 grid are all present in the 7 plus 7 one. So you can just add those up, right, plus some terms. Now here what happened is I saw 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and I thought that Hey, all these elements also exist in the previous row. So maybe we can use it again, but that, that won't work because uh, the, the query complexity you need for that is going to be order n. And so you can't really use the row sum of the previous row uh, to, to efficiently find the current row. Uh, but that's okay because what you're seeing here is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that tells you there's some sort of a series. And when you're trying to find a range sum in a series, one of the things that should actually occur to you is something called prefix sums. You can you can uh, calculate some queries really fast using those. So prefix sums we have discussed it quite a few times, but essentially what it means is that prefix up to i is going to be prefix up to i minus one, which is something that you have already calculated. To get to this point, you already calculated up to i minus one plus some sort of sum function. Uh, for the number i. So in our case, f of i is nothing but f of uh, 2i because 7 is going to give you, in fact, yeah, no, no that, that, that's just wrong, <laughs> f of i. So uh, taking an example, let's say I want to go up to 4. So for me, prefix of 0 is going to be 0, prefix of 1 is going to be prefix of 0 which is 0 plus f of 1 which is going to be 1, prefix of 2 is going to be prefix of 1 which is 1 plus f of 2 which is 2, so 1 plus 2 is going to be 3 and so on and so forth. Basically uh, this is a pretty simple formula and you can just calculate all the prefixes. The prefixes in our case define the number of diamonds in a row having size i. So if the row is going to be something like 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n, then the prefix sums of this are going to be an array of size n containing these values. So then what we have is you want to range through the prefix sums. So this is prefix up to value 14 is your last value. So that, that is prefix up to 14 minus what do you want? 8. So prefix up to 7. Because you want to include 8, you, you keep up to 7. Now you see that this row is symmetric to this column. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So all you need to do is you just need to multiply this by 2 because it's occurring twice in your new grid. Uh, and people who know about the intersection principle know that 14 is occurring twice. So you just subtract that again, minus f of, because 14 is the only element, f of 14. Okay. Pretty simple, pretty logical. The other thing you can do is you can just calculate up to 13 also, that's also fine. And subtract this. And instead of, instead of you know, subtracting 14 because you calculated it twice, you haven't calculated it any time. So this is just going to get added, plus f of 14. Many ways to do this. 
Uh, but the important thing to notice is that prefix sums will give you the new row very fast. All right. So what we are doing now is that the number of diamonds in any sized grid, let's say x, is going to be d of x minus 1, prefix up to, this is 13, right? Why was it 13? Because we had 7 there. So it's 2x minus 1 minus prefix of x into 2 plus f of 2x. And that's it. f of 2x, what's the time complexity for finding that out? Order 1. Prefix of x, time complexity to find that out? Order 1 because you have it already computed. This again is already computed. This is the order 1 operation. Uh, this is already computed for the new the, the new uh, grid. So what you have is to find all of these uh, these values from x going to 1 to n, you need order in time. And so what you're going to have is a big array of the number of diamonds that grids of different values have. So uh, the, of grids of different sizes basically. So this will be grid of size 1, grid of size 2, grid of size 3, grid of size 4, and so on and so forth. Up to the maximum value that your, your question can take, which is 10 raised to the power 6. All right? And the number of computations you need for this is order maximum value, which is basically 10 raised to the power 6 computations. Anytime you get a test case, which is telling you some for some value n, all you need to do is you just need to go to that point and print the answer. So this problem is actually quite easy. If you can recognize the patterns and know about prefix sums, you get it almost immediately. Uh, I'll be attaching the link for the code in the description and also some links about prefix sums in the description below. Uh, if you have any doubts or suggestions, of course, leave them in the comments below. And for further notifications, you can subscribe. So until next time, then see you.